Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Ansel DS100 OBD2 scanner. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So here it says accurate scanner, extensive vehicle coverage, multi-language supported, update online. So this can read codes, do diagnostics. You can do ABS brake bleeding. According to the Amazon description, this offers free upgrades for life. So let's get this open. So it has a nice case here. Here we have the manual. Let's take a quick look at it. So we have an IO port on the top, it has a power button, touch screen, USB-C port. Here are the specs. So the internals of this will probably be similar to like a smartphone. This talks about DS100. It says supports 100 plus vehicle models for diagnosing four ECUs, ECM, TCM, ABS, and SRS. This talks about how to use it. So you want to find your port. You can set the language. You can connect this to Wi-Fi. Here's the main interface. Now they want you to update this before you use it. This has auto VIN search. So it will try to find the VIN on your OBD2 port. It talks about diagnosis. These are the maintenance modes. OBD fault code library. It talks about update. We have FAQ. Okay, so here's the scanner. We have the diagnostic cable and a USB-C cable. So this is kind of a soft rubberized kind of plastic on the outside. Here we have the back and it protrudes here so you can wrap your hand around it and it feels really nice. It's real easy to hold. On top we have that USB-C port, the diagnostic port and power button. So let's hold this down, see if it turns on. Okay, so it's booting, it may need to be charged. So you can charge this with a USB charger, like a phone charger. I'm going to turn off my light here, so hopefully we have less glare. Okay, it looks like the battery is charged up all the way, according to this. I'm going to turn off my overhead light too. This is very easy to see in person, but I have bright overhead lights and the angle I capture it at on the camera makes it hard to see. But I can see it perfectly well with my eyes. I'm going to choose English here. Here's a little tutorial. It says slide down, quickly open the Wi-Fi connection and quickly open the screen recording and screenshot function. Okay. So I'll pull down. I'll hit the arrow next to Wi-Fi and I'll set up my Wi-Fi network. So I'm connected to Wi-Fi. I'll go to update on the right and I'll hit upgrade. So this will download the upgrades from the internet. Okay, so I skipped ahead. That took a couple minutes to upgrade. But now it's done, it says no data. If we tap on the right here, we'll see the software that was upgraded, has the version numbers next to it. If I hit this little up arrow here, it's going to show other upgrades. I think these are the different apps. So I'll hit download here and upgrade that. And that's installing, but that will happen in the background. So I'll hit back twice and we'll go to the main screen. So on this screen, we have auto search, diagnose, OBD, maintenance, file, consult, and service. So for a lot of these, we'll need to connect it up. For diagnose, we would maintenance so here are the maintenance modes we have abs bleeding brake pad reset gear learning steering angle reset battery matching electronic throttle adaption and oil reset here we have file so if we make reports i think you could do screenshots too those would likely store there we have consult so we have a code library service video user manual coverage list and learning and then here we have service Oh, and this is where you can send a message. I think that's like a support function. And we also have that off to the side here. And this is kind of blocking that, but you can move this little thing around. Now it's been running quite a while because it did those updates. It's down to 84%. So if I want to charge this, I can plug in the top here and that will start charging. So I just wanted to take a close up look at this on the bench so we could see this in detail. So now let's head out to the car and test this out. Okay, so I'm out here at my 2016 Subaru Outback. I have the scanner here. The OBD2 port is up under the dash. So I'll plug this in. Okay, that's plugged in, this turned on. So I'm going to turn the car on. Now I don't necessarily need to start it. I'll hit auto search.
It's going to scan for the VIN number. Okay, so it found my vehicle. It wants me to select my area, so I'll do that. I'm in North America. I'll hit yes. I have an Outback, and here I can run a health report. So I'll run that. Okay, so it found some codes. It says these are from the past, so if I tap on them, it will do a web search in Chrome, so you can research it right from this device. Now you do need to be connected to Wi-Fi for this to work, so you can connect to a Wi-Fi access point, or a hotspot, or a phone. So this is just doing a search on the code in Subaru. You could add other criteria in there and look through the searches. So we can hit back. Now back is covered by this service button. We can drag that service button out of the way and I'll hit back. We can go down through here. Here's some airbag codes and these are from the past. Everything else is looking good here. We can hit report. We have some criteria we can fill out here. I'll hit OK. You can enter information about your shop. I'll hit OK. And here we have the report. So I'll say PDF. And this saved a PDF. I can also hit share. And I can share this via Bluetooth or email. So I'll back out of this. I'll go back to this screen with system selection. I'll tap on it. And here we have different systems. So I can tap on engine. It will connect up. And we can read fault codes, we can clear memory. And when we looked up the health report, we could clear memory there too. But the feature I want to show here is read data stream. So we can tap on that. And now we have all of these parameters we can track. So let's find one here. Here we have accelerator pedal position. We'll tap on that. I'll hit OK. And this is showing the position of the accelerator pedal. So I'll press in on that. Now for some reason it says 13% while it's all the way up. If I press in, that will change. This is all the way down, so it goes to 64%. And we have a graph on here also. So we can tap that, and you can see the graph. And as I press on it, you can see it go up and down. Looks like we can expand this here. Okay, so we can do four data streams at a time. So if you want to track different things together, you can do that. So we can save the sample. I'll hit OK. It has the state of the vehicle. I'll hit OK. So now it's recording. I'm pressing in on the accelerator and it's saving. So I'll hit stop. And this says the max and min values. I'll hit save. It has a file name and I'll hit OK. So I'll go back. So there are many, many things you can track here. You can see all these with active grill shutter. I don't have that on my car. You will have to sort through all of these. Here we have blower fan, brake switch, engine speed. So tons of features on here. So if you're checking for a thermostat or something to work, you could pull that up in here. You could put engine speed. There's many, many things you could do with this. So here we'll go back out. We'll go back out again. It says, would you like to end your session? I'll say yes. So that's the Ancel DS100 OBD2 code scanner. I really like how easy this was to use. I plugged it in and it automatically found the VIN number. I did a health check and it told me the codes I had. I can address them there. I can search for them there or I could clear them. Once you know what the problem is, you can go into the different systems, pull up parameters, track them, look at them, and help diagnose your problem. I like that you can also save things out on this and email them. Sometimes you may need to research things later, or you might want to give it to a customer, so that makes it very easy. And I really like how easy this screen is to see. It has very good contrast and a very easy to use interface.
So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.